You're watching the new home for live Grizzly Athletics on the Grizzly Digital Network. We would like to thank our corporate sponsors who have made today's game possible. For more information, log on to grizzlyathletics.com. Now, here's voice of the Grizzlies, Matt Mahoney. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live in Nuke City. We're back to our rightful home at our rightful time and our rightful place here in Lawrenceville. 12 noon every Wednesday. I'm Matt Mahoney, your host, and today we have a special guest. We're joined by Clay Tranum, our Sports Information Director at Georgia Gwinnett. How are you, Clay? I'm outstanding. Clay is uh, new to our family here in Grizzly Athletics. You've been here for the entire fall semester, and so today we've got a special show. We're going to recap and uh, have our top five accomplishments of Grizzly Athletics for this fall season. So what better person that's had a front row seat to it all than Clay Tranum? Clay? What's, uh, what's been your first impressions here uh, of athletic department so far? It's, it's been fun. Um, this upcoming Monday will be three months that I've been here, so kind of excited to make my proper clay view <laughs> on uh, Grizzlies Live. That's awful, clay debut, clay view. I can't even get it right, it's so bad. But um, is it has it been a challenge for you? I know we're, we're new to everything, but man, the the milestones rack up every week and the championships keep pouring in. Is it tough to keep up with all this stuff? Yeah, it's it's basically like a new record every other game. <laughs> uh, I've gotten a little bit used to that. Um, hopefully that sort of thing keeps going. So we'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. So it should be uh, it should be a great episode we got for you here today. We'll we'll dive right into our top five accomplishments of the Grizzly Athletics fall season, and we got number five for you here. It's a historical event in the GGC hosting inaugural homecoming. A great turnout by the GGC alumni who participated in many activities throughout the day, including alumni breakfast campus tours and even some tailgating going on around the Grizzly Athletics Complex as the Grizzly men's soccer team started the day against Bob Jones and what a phenomenal day it was. Weather was great. Martin Lugo gets on the action early with a goal but it was Sammy Gomes who uh, took the headlines with a hat trick scoring three goals. The first hat trick of the season for GGC and German Rodriguez were also honored before the game as part of the 2014 senior class and represented well with a goal in the second half. The Grizzlies would go on to win the match by a score of 6-1. to one. Meanwhile, fellowship and social activities were held in the alumni uh, for the alumni in the hospitality suite while watching the men's soccer game. And of course, they were a part of the uh, alumni parade, which was led by our, our inaugural class of 20, uh, 2006. Between the games, we also saw the GGC Royal Court. And then in the nightcap, the Grizzly women's soccer team took center stage against Middle Georgia. Tiffany Rodriguez knocks home a rebound to get the Grizzly attack going early. And later on, probably one of the more impressive goals of the season, Bristol County scores on an impressive volley in front of a great crowd at the Grizzly Soccer Complex. By day's end, the Grizzlies would defeat Middle Georgia 4 to nothing, making it a great day to be a Grizzly. Checking in at number five, it's GGC's first ever homecoming, and what a phenomenal sight. I mean, literally phenomenal is the word for that day's events that that happened. Yeah, biggest crowd of the season for both the men and the women. You know, third year athletics, it's probably about time to get homecoming going. It's not just a big deal for the for the classes that go through GGC, of which there's only been a handful, obviously, right. but also for athletics to kind of get them, get them back involved, bring them back to campus, show how things have changed, show how things have not changed. <laughs> right. No, some of the class had a chance to talk to them. They came to GDC when there was only one building, literally one building on campus. So big thanks to Andrew Schmidt and his office and development that was able to put that together. And a lot of parties went into it behind the scenes. And yeah, it's great that day to win two soccer games, but just the whole effort that encompassed what homecoming was was definitely a victory. Yeah, yeah. I would have to say, you know, it was a big, Andrew Schmidt did a really good job. He came on this show. He promoted to us. We had a lot of contact with him over the whole fall. So. To see it all come together was pretty special. And to win what, 10 to, 10 to 1 that day in two games, that's, that's pretty phenomenal too. Uh, the, the seniors on the women's side oh. too, that was a great story that was probably flew under the radar that we had four of our seven seniors finish their GDC regular season career against the team they started it with in Middle Georgia because then they were a two-year program, now a four-year school. Yeah, that was that was definitely a nice story. It was something that I was keeping tabs on once I saw that when the saw that at the end of the season. It's probably even a little crazier to two of those girls who are obviously coming from overseas, one from Ireland, one from Sweden. So they come to America and then they play at the first school, go to another one and they play the first school again. So yeah. it, it's 
definitely a moment to remember. But also, you know, Amanda Dale, who before this season was our all-time leading goal scorer. She right. was sitting there in the front row cheering him on. Yeah, Amanda was front and center for sure. Had a lot of friends uh, that were on both teams. So that was a pretty cool story as well. Absolutely. So we'll move right along here. That's number five. And we go to number four here. Speaking of uh, Grizzly women's soccer, their record-setting season Finishing with 10 wins, 6 losses, and 2 ties, the Grizzlies earned the right to travel to the AII tournament in their second consecutive season, and they did it in a very flashy way by breaking numerous school records, including 54 goals scored in a season, finishing the regular season with an 8-game eight, eight unbeaten streak, and hanging around the top 25 for all 8 of the regular season coaches poll. Led by a group of seven seniors, the 2014 class will be one worth remembering as 27 players in total contributed quality minutes, 20 of them recorded points and memories that will last forever. Registering at a strong number four, it's Grizzly women's soccer record-breaking performance in clay. We don't have enough time in this show to go through all the records they knocked out this season. Yeah, I mean, the list is very long. We're seeing some goals from uh, the Tennessee Temple match right now. and. I'll be honest with you, I haven't even seen some of them <laughs> because we scored 10 times that match. It was a 10-0 win, a program record, and my vantage point, sometimes I'm entering the goals and another one goes in. <laughs> so um, that was just one of the records that game. We had four games left in the season after that. We had already tied the single season total with I love goals. that stat. We, we tied the single season record with four games still left in the season. Yeah, it's... It was just nuts to follow. We finished with 54 goals, um, had goals from everywhere, just everywhere. 18 different scores. Wow. And then the other team had, you know, two own goals. So <laughs> you could say 20 different scores if you wanted to. And what's great, I, I think what really summarizes this year's squad is Mary Vernetti is, is GDC's all-time leading goal scorer, and she was second on the team this year in goals with Nikki LaFave. That just tells you how explosive this team is offensively. Absolutely. She's got... Vernetti now has 26 goals for her career. She broke Dale's record. She had 22 through two seasons. But here's the thing. Vernetti may have another season left, but Lefebvre has two. Yeah. And Lefebvre is just 10 goals behind her. It'll, it'll be a great storyline to follow going into next year, and I'm glad to have hopefully both those back next year going into that team clicking on all cylinders. When they're scoring, they're hard to stop. The wins rack up. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that eight-match unbeaten streak was a school record. Uh, it was a great way to end the regular season. And uh, three third consecutive season with 10 wins for uh, Grizzly women's soccer team. So a great milestone to say the very least. All right, we'll turn the page now to number three on our list. And this one is one we've seen before. If you've paid attention from last season to this season, the Grizzly men's soccer team goes back on the road to Auburn Montgomery. Then the Grizzlies were number 16, Auburn Montgomery number two. It was a mostly an AUM attack in the first half and even a 1-0 lead for the Warhawks at halftime, but the Grizzlies on the road as underdogs again. They rise to the occasion. They would strike back in the second half as Ibrahima Sissoko would set up Samuel Gomes knifing through the Warhawks defense. He puts one in the back of the net for the equalizer. Then a Callum Morty uh, turnover in the midfield, and then you see Morty streaking down the middle of your screen there. He gets it back from Lugo and blasts one in the back of the net for the game winner just two minutes after Gomes had scored. Lewis Sharp in the defense stood tall with nine saves to finish out the contest, and a 2-1 to one win is the biggest win for men's soccer against the highest-ranked opponent in the program's history. At then, AUM was ranked number two, and obviously that's a, that's a great mark that, that checks in at number three on our list here, and it just really kind of pointed that ship in the right direction. We figured out how, how good this team is moving forward. Absolutely. That one's kind of big for me. That was my first road trip. It was about a week after I started. Um, AUM national runner up, you know, big time program. And we sat there, we absorbed a lot of pressure there in the first half, kind of gave up a goal there. But the second half, we were just a different team, just a different team. And I think it was kind of a preview for what was to come for yep. Lewis Sharp, who, as Coach Taku said, was the most valuable player for us this year. He, uh, Lewis really grew some roots two years ago in 2013 at the game, came up with a big save late to give us the one nothing win. And you could tell the, the young fellow was really starting to, to, to branch out and grow a little bit. But, yeah, that, that game there, I think, gave that young man a lot of confidence moving forward in that season. Also, Callum Morty. You, you don't know what that, that game did for that man emotionally because a year ago he got hurt at that game. And so he comes back and gets the game winner at the same spot in the same location. Phenomenal stuff, and man. became one of our most important players. I think so, too. He was big for us in the tournament and big for us in other, in other big moments the whole year. 
And so a great win for the Grizzlies there, pointing the ship in the right direction, headed throughout the rest of the season as they take down number two AUM for our number three moment of top accomplishment for Grizzly Athletics this fall season. We're going to take a break and we'll come back for number one and two. I mean, so that's going to be tough to top there. What's going to be one and two here for our fall accomplishments? I think people might have an idea on one of them. Yeah, one, one's pretty obvious, but two might surprise some folks. We'll take a break and find out what it is. This is Grizzlies Live in Duke Cedar on the Grizzly Digital Network. Hello, I'm Dr. Darren Wilson, Director of Athletics at Georgia Gwinnett College. Our administrators, coaches, and staff are proud to be one of the newest members in the NAIA. We aim to uphold the NAIA Champions of Character principles by promoting a positive climate for growth while fostering relationships within Georgia Gwinnett College, Lawrenceville, and Gwinnett County. In addition, we embrace our core values for the Grizzly Athletic Department, sportsmanship, leadership, service, responsibility, and pursuing excellence. Our mission is to develop lifelong leaders of character through academic and athletic excellence. Go Grizzlies! Are you tracking the very latest with Grizzly Athletics? Stay up to date by following Grizzly Athletics on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can join the conversation by using the hashtag Grizzly Athletics all season long. And as always, catch all the recaps, stats, and news on grizzlyathletics.com. Don't be left out. Follow all the latest with Grizzly Athletics online. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live in Nuke City. We're counting down the top five accomplishments for just the fall season. You're not going to see baseball, not going to see softball, but you will see some tennis here at number two. We dive right into our list here as Grizzlies tennis success at the ITA Small College National Championship after an unprecedented spring season capturing two NAI National Championship. The Grizzly tennis program will continue their championship ways on the ITA circuit this past fall season. For the first time in school season, Valeria Poda would represent Grizzly women's tennis at the ITA Small College National Championships in Sumner, South Carolina. On the men's side, Jordan Cox would win the ITA South Regional Championship, another GGC first, also punching his ticket to the ITA Small College National Championships among the top six players at the small college level in the entire country. Adding to the success as well, Connor Clements and Latchin McPhee teamed up to capture the ITA South Regional Doubles Championship. This marked another milestone for the Grizzly Tennis Program as the two would showcase their abilities in Sumner as well with the rest of the small college talent. At more impressive here at number two is the Grizzlies Tennis Program and their ITA Championship run. Clay, words cannot express how impressive this is for just uh, the first time we've really competed in the fall at the individual level at the ITA level and of course for Chase Hodges and success just goes hand in hand. It was just a massive massive fall for the program I mean it's not just going to the ITA regionals and being successful it's not just advancing to the small college championships but the guy for the men they started at the Southern Intercollegiates yeah. which is one of the biggest tournaments you know in the country really and they're playing schools from the SEC, schools from the ACC, other Division One opponents. They go out there and they got nine wins over Division One opponents. And I mean, I think it says a lot to the program that Jordan Cox, who's playing in his first tournament yep. with GGC, there is the eight seed. Yeah, he's viewed that highly. So they did well there. They moved on, got to the ITA regional. Cox, you know, kind of glides through the regional. He doesn't face a whole lot of issues there. And then Lachlan and Connor. I mean. I think that I think Chase was just as happy with those two as I he agree. was with anybody else. Because I, I think the expectations might have been there for Jordan. Chase knew how good Jordan was, but when he put Connor and Latchin together, he really didn't know what the ceiling was for them. And so for them to cruise to a doubles championship, you, the, the light kind of goes on for Coach Oz and think how special this group is going to be. Yeah, I mean, Lachlan's just a freshman from Australia. Ooh. You know, you, you, you think about it, you kind of know what you got with Jordan Cox, but it's still his first season. You think right. you kind of know what you got with Lachlan. I mean, obviously, you get thought enough of him to bring him here, so he shows up and then probably exceeds expectations, not only in doubles, but in singles as well. And then to get for those two to get a regional crown, which was the first in history, and then for Cox to get a regional crown, which was the first in history, and then Valeria sits there and goes, and she goes to the final, but she loses to a player who didn't lose her first collegiate match until the small college championships. It was a pretty good 
pretty good fall for them. And, and again, when we talk about two NAI national championship, which is a team event in the spring, this is an individual event in the fall. And when we say small college, we're talking NCAA Division II, NCAA Division Three, junior college and NAI. And we had Valeria Jordan and then a team of doubles that are among the top eight in the country. Pretty phenomenal stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard to really complain about. And then um, to come off of the small college championships, they come back home. Some of the guy, some of those guys don't play um, in their like Jordan Cox doesn't play in singles in their home tournament, but Connor Clements does, <laughs> and sits there and goes to the final and beats a Division II All American, a guy who's who was the runner-up in the Division II tournament at the yeah. Small College Championships. One of the best D2 players in the country, and he wins the event. And then you have Cox and Matias Haddam, who are, or Haddam, I'm sorry, who are, you know, two of the best singles players in the country. They yeah. sit there and win the doubles tournament. And Valeria played someone from the D2 National Championship team and beat her, too. So, so for, for Clay that's just getting used to Grizzly Athletics, you can hear the excitement in his voice about what we're getting ready for the spring. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, the spring is going to be something to look at. I mean, you got 20, I believe it's 24 ranked teams Ooh. on both the guys and the girls who they'll be playing over this well, On their schedule right, right now. A lot of them are here. Yeah. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fun to watch. It'll be great. So that's number two on our list here, and we'll turn the page over. We'll uh, dive right into number one, and this one's probably a little predicted here. Number one on our list is the Grizzly Men's Soccer AII Championship in Clinton, Iowa. The Grizzlies battled frigid temperatures as well as a familiar foe in Cal State San Marcos in the semifinals. Ibrahima Sissoko would be the hero with his goal in double overtime with 25 seconds left to defeat the Cougars for the second time in two years in advance to the championship game on Saturday. Snowy conditions along with Houston Victoria and a pressure packed match would stand between Grizzlies and Glory. It was the fighting the elements and even the fans were into all the excitement as German Rodriguez would get things going early for the Grizzlies as he finds an opening in the defense and all you need is a little window. German puts a strong right foot on it, beats the goalkeeper, an early 1-0 lead for the Grizzlies, create a lot of spark and a lot of momentum and then the game winner here as Lugo connects with uh, Juan Geraldo for the game winner, the Grizzlies would be up uh, two to one. They would hold on through snowy conditions in the second half, highlighted by Lewis Sharp's performance as the tournament's most outstanding player. After the emotional conclusion, the Grizzlies would crown the AII champions in back-to-back -back seasons. It's our number one accomplishment for Grizzly athletics in the fall season is the AII 2014 championship for Steve Deku and company. And Clay, I am so glad we come back with that trophy because I was absolutely numb those two days. Um, numb I, with excitement, right? Yeah. I am from up north originally. <laughs> I don't know if I can remember ever being that cold. And it creates I, for a great moment here. We're going to see with this. His photos all over our website. It's all over campus, and uh, it's all over the Grizzly Digital Network. And just with the snow falling there, holding the trophy, honoring Saul as well, just a great moment there to kind of wrap up our whole season. Absolutely, it was it was a very long two days. <laughs> uh, that first day we went out there for practice. Uh, it was very very windy. It was probably warmer, but it was very windy, and I was just starting to worry. And then we played at night. Yeah. Oh. Yep. I, I, I tell, I've told the stories in certain circles, and I'll share it with everybody. What, what drove me nuts about being cold is we had no reason to be there because other than Ashford, which was right there in Iowa, we're dealing with San Marcos and sunny Southern California, a team from Victoria, Texas, right outside of Houston, uh, high humid temperatures, and then Atlanta, Georgia, where we're used to uh, nice warm weather, nothing too cold, and we went to – Clinton, Iowa, to play this soccer tournament in November. So we'll never have to go back there again, I promise, folks. But it, it made a lot of sense to, uh, to to us come back and win that championship. Well, yeah, and I think it's I think it's actually impressive when you kind of sit here and think about it. The teams that were that played the best up there, no disrespect to Ashford, were the warm weather teams. Yep. Like Cal State San Marcos gave us one heck of a match uh, that first game. Went to OT. Eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. Yeah, couldn't have been colder. I think it was twelve degrees when the game ended. And then we came back the next day, played Houston. Houston played just as cold weather the day before against yep. Ashford, and you know had to win a penalty shootout to even get there. So uh, 
it was a it was a pretty good time, but I was very 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 happy to get into a warm hotel after both games. So uh, Coach Taku brings home the AI championship for the second consecutive year, and again we date back to last year in 2013. Coach Taku wins that championship at home. It kind of set the precedent moving forward and set up a lot of the spring championships, and so. There's the bar again, folks, back-to-back -back AI championships. So good luck to tennis programs and baseball and softball because those are the two trophies are sitting nicely there in our trophy case at the Grizzly Athletic Complex. And we're the first back-to-back -back AI champions since 2009 and 10. Yep. Uh, that's something that doesn't happen in that league a lot. So hopefully we'll be able to do that in some of our other sports. You know, it's just uh, it was kind of a microcosm of the season there. You know, we sat there and got dealt a little a couple tough blows like in some of the other games and battled to a tough 2-1 win which was kind of kind of the way it happens for us this year a lot and again another 2-1 victory against san marcos in the semifinals game last year and this year could have went either way and so a big win for coach Taku and the grizzlies um, this season again capping off a, a wonderful year we're, we're going to take a break here We'll come back and put a nice little bow on this show as we uh, recap the top five accomplishments for Grizzly Athletics in just this fall season. This is Grizzlies Live in Nuke City on the Grizzly Digital Network. Grizzly fans, you can purchase your season passes today. Packages are available for the fall or spring or all sporting events. You can find out more information by calling the Office of Athletics at 678-407-5275 or by visiting the game day ticket window. Single game discounts are available on game day, including youth, senior, military, and group rates. Tickets are selling fast as the Grizzlies take the field. We invite you to come experience fast-paced collegiate athletics at a friendly price. Visit grizzlyathletics.com for more information and be sure to purchase your season tickets today. As a member of the NAIA, Georgia Gwinnett College is responsible for the actions of its coaches, student athletes, faculty and staff, fans, boosters, and alumni. We are committed to the principle of institutional control and operate in our athletics program in a manner consistent with the letter and spirit of the NAIA and Georgia Gwinnett College. We expect our student athletes to be model students in the classroom by offering academic support services in a variety of ways throughout their collegiate career. From study halls and tutoring to mentoring and personal growth and development training, GGC puts academic success at the forefront of our mission. Go Grizzlies! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live here at Nuke Series. Uh, we're in our final segment here, joined by Clay Train, our Sports Information Director. Clay, thanks for coming by, man. Appreciate you uh, co-hosting the show with me. No problem. Final thoughts here as we wrap up the show. Well, first, I'm a little upset that nobody had a sign for me. <laughs> I was kind of hoping Zach would come back with a sign for me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great, great fall, great first three months for me here. Hopefully we'll see a lot more success, a lot more fun once we go to the spring season. Um, Going to have a, <laughs> a high standard to meet from last spring and from this fall. Schedules are up on the website as well. Um, big thanks to Clay, too. I know a lot of the stats and information that we get that I say it comes from your desk in your office, and I greatly appreciate the work and dedication, my man. No problem. Uh, but what we got next? Baseball season, January 30th coming up here? Yeah, baseball and tennis. Same day, right? Yes, both start on January 30th, and then uh, softball schedule just got released today. Put it on your schedule. So um, that'll begin, I believe, the first week of February. We'll have a whole month of Grizzlies Live leading up to the spring sports after the Christmas break, so be sure to stay on our website, grizzlyathletics.com, and as always, stay locked to the Grizzly Digital Network. Not to be forgotten, our tweet of the week comes from Mary Burke, showing her support of Grizzly men's soccer and uh, even using the, the green heart. How do, how do you do that? Is that a green heart emoticon? I have no idea what that is, but I don't know how to do that. We need to figure out how to do that. I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Our, Colin and Marissa are laughing at us because they know how to do that stuff, and we don't. But thank you uh, there for uh, for Mary, and obviously she used the hashtag GrizzlyMSoccer. You can be our tweet of the week by using any of the Grizzly hashtags. And then uh, we'll have Grizzlies Live. We'll cap off the fall semester with a special edition with Director of Athletics, Dr. Darren Wilson, next Wednesday at 12 noon right here from Nukes Eatery. Big thanks again to Greg and Bill and the staff here that have put up with all of our schedule changes all semester long with the uh, Grizzlies Live here at Nukes Eatery. And we'll uh, treat them well as we uh, finish up next week and uh, take a break for Christmas when we come back in January. I think that's it. Marissa, Colin, thumbs up from them. Yeah, thumbs up from Colin heading on. 
First on right. camera, thumbs up. Clay Tran. I'm, I'm pumped about this part. Thumbs up as well. I'll get out of here. I'm Matt Mahoney signing off for our crew saying so long, everybody. This is Grizzlies Live in Nuke City on the Grizzly Digital Network. Go Grizzlies. I'd like to thank all of our corporate sponsors who have made today's game possible. You can watch this game and previous games by clicking the On Demand tab at the top of the page. In addition, you can watch coaches' shows and weekly feature stories all on the Grizzly Digital Network by clicking the On Demand tab as well. For the latest information, including game recaps, schedules, and so much more, visit grizzlyathletics.com.